G'day and welcome. This is yet another diversion from Power Without Fuel episodes and is a follow-up to my EVs are worse than ice video defending the reputation of suck bang glow engines in the onslaught of the flow of electrons alternative. Engines are being replaced by motors that are hardly bigger than what's under your fridge. So can they compete? Well, the Electric Viking and many others on the one gear is enough bandwagon think so. So I'm doing a three car comparison, one electric and two ice that I suspect may just be better buys than the Ionic 5. This is no road test and is generated, excuse the pun, by the Vikings claim that the Hyundai is cheaper than ice cars. He qualified it by comparing to an Audi e-tron GT at twice the price but then used the Norwegian 21 car EV test to somehow drive the point home. Both didn't have an ice car in the comparisons. A bit strange. So I am doing the comparing with a couple of ice cars that I would rather own. Like the Viking, I'll be doing this from my armchair. While no expert, I hope to display enough expertise to convince a few rational people out there. There's no punishment for failing, so I'll jump right in. My first choice would be the Jaguar F-Pace, but as a spirited driver, I won't discount the Stelvio by Alfa Romeo. If money was no object, the top of the line V6 Quadrifoglio would win hands down, but that's in another league and another price bracket. Both cars have to be at the bottom of their price ranges. Pity the Viking didn't think the Audi was the bee's knees. To find a winner, I will score in two areas. First, the specifications I can find for all three cars. Then the comments by real testers when I can find them on Google. Some sources are linked in my comments for you to reference. Lastly, what I perceive from digging into my 50 years of being somewhat observant is contained in the second group. It would be unfair to score one car on something I can't find on the other two. So the comparison has limitations and I absolve myself of all responsibility. I try not to be as Mickey Mouse as the 21EB test, tongue in cheek. This is just a fun exercise while I am lame and practice at uploading to YouTube. Besides, we are all different and while I don't need child seats, some people need people movers to get enough of them. Glad those days are over. There are five tables with lots of stuff left out, since most specs are moot. For example, no need to say there's five seats three times over. Much is common to all, without anything that would score extra points for one in particular. Too far into the Comparo, and I realised I would get the Porsche Macan before any of them. Remiss of me not to think of it first, and too late now. On to the first spec sheet. Engine. EV is way behind because it has too many drawbacks with the battery. Too many to mention, but challenge me in the comments. Power and torque. EV just wins because all are very good for SUVs. It looks like a 10 for torque, but having no gears gelds much of it. And there's a huge problem I'll explain when I get to top speed. Acceleration. EV is the winner. And Jag lags a bit. Not forgetting these are SUVs though. Top speed. EV lags a bit too much, while the ICE cars are both fast. Fortunately, they are also some of the most competent SUVs on the market. I wouldn't want a Haval capable of 230 in a straight line. Now for the elephant in the room that affects power, torque, acceleration, charge rates and top speed. The Ionic only has these available sometimes and when it feels like it, not when you do. Let me explain. As fossil fuel cars deplete their fuel, they slightly improve their already great handling, acceleration and top speed, as weight is shared, with not a care for the weather. But an EV has a mind of its own and will at any time, even on full charge, do something they call thermal throttling. And the Ionic 5 does it quite a lot, according to my limited research. So you charge up and hit the autobahn, only to find you have about half the power because the CPU needs to cool. Suddenly your car won't pull the skin off a rice pudding and you're left waiting for 20 minutes or more watching Corollas zip past you. Yep, did you notice that real range estimation on the green table? It's more estimation than real. And real is at the lower end when you can see the sunshine. 
If you want a car to perform whenever you want it to, you can only rely on fossil fuel powered. Since when has becoming a slave to the CPU in your car an improvement in cars? That's the first table, and I'll have to get Mickey Mouse if I'm to stay under 20 minutes. You can get an idea by this hard data how I've scored, but when we get to the ethereal stuff, I won't have time to reference the road testers. You'll just have to trust me, I'm not a car salesman. On to the second and third tables. Fuel. They're duplicated because the first has extra info about the EV and the other erases them to show the scores. Fuel type. The EV can't score much because electrons are only packed in at 1 of the power density of petrol. Giving them one fourth of the ice scores is overly generous by a factor of five. I'll give them more when they are non-volatile, i.e. solid state. Capacity. Biggest tank and range gets jagged the chocolates, and Alpha nearly there a close second, but the EV drags the chain. And again, I was generous, and ignored that a fuel tank is small and light in comparison to a battery pack, since smaller motors than engines don't go anywhere near offsetting. Consumption, combined highway and city. Differences reflect how ICE cars perform better on the open road, while EVs are better in town. The Alpha is slightly more efficient than the Jag, but both are excellent, and then the EV just can't compete. Where it shines a bit is those electrons are at least half price in comparison. Range. More chocolates go to the Jag by having a bigger tank. And how far back is that EV? Way behind every ICE SUV on the planet, for sure. Fill up times and annual averages. Here's where I refer to that extra info for the EV, as the nuances are so complicated. In the green box, you get weather affecting the range. No problem for petrol, but definitely something you need to be on top of in an EV. Then in the orange box, you have the added fun of how much you will extend your refill times with many options open to you. Using a Bowser is simpler. Look at the differences between the steady times for petrol fills and the fastest possible times for that EV. They are eons apart. You'll need to sit when you compare the EV's slowest times, and you'll have to sleep for many of the charges, because not even a shopaholic could shop for that long. The must-have gimmick is that seat that reclines a long way. It will be in that position more often than upright. The comparison could end here, as it's a lay-down mazir for petrol tanks. The EV has been trumped and sent packing. No need to argue the range isn't needed claptrap. It simply isn't there, and end of story. But even I can see you can make something that suits a few. Just don't say it's better. It's only convenient for rare applications. It's ironic that the table devoid of scoring is clearly shows the massive inferiority of the EV. And that's why I made my previous video, EVs are worse than ice cars. Next table is back to the hard data of measurements. Nothing untoward about length, width and height, hardly affecting the end result either. I had to resort to half points to maintain a balance with the other tables. Ground clearance, the EV lost a bit on the basis that the battery is dangerously close to hitting the ground, and the long wheelbase only makes that more possible. Weight and efficiency are important since cornering is affected. The EV has the biggest problem there. Load space, minimum and max, is really important. After all, if the Comparo wasn't SUVs, I could have picked some great sedans. Hard data shows the Jag nails it. Towing capacity. Well, you should be looking at something like an Iveco daily. But if you want an SUV to tow, you won't be getting much utility out of this EV. Chockies to the Jag once more. Alpha is at least two Vespas better than the EV. We're in a caravan that would be dual axle for stability plus a full on suite for middle of the night convenience. The Jag can have the Vespas as well. Next table is the ethereal stuff. Notice, done alphabetical. We need to read lots of actual test drives to really understand their scores. I have doubled the points for overall balance at the risk of greater inaccuracy. Let me know what you think in the comments. Time to dive in, I'm running out of it. Badge. A Hyundai badge is like putting lipstick on a pig if you think it has any credence in this company. If automakers were flaws on the Burj Khalifa, Hyundai would be around 25th, Alpha 125th, and Jag about 130th, with well over 30 left for the likes of Ferrari, Porsche, Bugatti and such. Maybe not enough flaws. K2 
comfort. Jag is renowned for this, but the ethic bodes well because head and leg room count for one. Fun factor. This deserves a page on its own, which I can't give it, but it's fun factor enthusiasts desire most. And they don't usually look for it in SUVs. BMW calls it pure driving pleasure. It's not about getting from A to B, but the joy of the journey. I gave it to the Alpha, and we all know Jags are damn good, but Hyundai's are not even players. Just A to B for them, and the EV is designed for more of the same. You'll have more fun reclining the seat and sleeping to while away the long charge times than you will piloting it. Maybe fun sticking feet magnets to the dash, which you could do in the 60s when dashes would crush you in a crash. At least you could put the hospital's phone number on one of the dash magnets. Looks, maybe I should leave this one to Shakespeare. It's probably the most subjective of all, but I gave it a shot and awarded the chocolates to the EV, because it's far more modern and that's something highly regarded in the industry. It not only looks better on the outside, it is far better inside. I consider it the EV's strongest point. Kudos for that. Luxury. Linked with comfort, but things have to bling as well, and there's not a lot between them. Alpha is dated, Jag is sophisticated, and Hyundai can hold its head up in between the two. With a far better job than in the first Ionic and most of the cars it has ever made. Quality. Quality is the bling that makes some of the luxury plus more and Jag has been using quality interiors before Hyundai was hatched. Alpha may make interiors okay, but rusting steel has been a long-term issue, and that's a real quality issue. Hyundai just pipped Alpha, even though their XLs and Lantras used to sag on their suspensions till they were out of adjustment before the first set of tyres had worn out. I believe they got past that. Engines were rubbish also. All three brands are risky business and need to lift their game. Reliability. I wish I had a crystal ball. Digging into 50 years of reading about cars, my money is on the Alpha giving the most woes, with the Jag not much better, both needing a lot to learn from Toyota. However, the unknown factor is the EV I had to slot between them. I just couldn't bring myself to give Hyundai top spot over a Jag. Resale value. Give me that crystal ball again. Alphas and Jags are bad enough, but who knows where an EV made in Korea is going to slot in. I kept them close to be fair, and made the EV last by a meagre point on the basis that half of it is disposable battery, with no result. The rest looks like lasting a long time, but there's just not a lot left to sell. Safety, a big markdown for the EV, and here's why. The Alpha and the Jag have high ratings from the many crash tests they undergo, which factor in how safe the fuel tank is in the event of accidents. But lithium batteries may not get considered, at least as far as I know, and I could be wrong. But the facts according to Eric are that liquid state batteries are dangerous. So much so that you don't even have to have an accident. They can explode in your garage while sleeping in the bedroom above. You might never even know about it. Now the media report the dendrite problem and to counter it. Other media reports say more fires are in ice cars. But most are not while driving or sleeping in the bedroom above while you have to charge it. I would bet most have started at service stations where some idiot has smoked while filling or maybe even answered a phone call. Human error, not built into the product. I don't smoke and I have yet to get a phone call in the three minutes a week I am at a petrol pump and regard risks of being an idiot very low. I just ring back later because it records my missed call. I don't buy Samsung phones but I admit to playing Russian roulette with my cheap oppo. I have to admit I don't like the thought of it, but I am dead set against having something 6,000 times larger charging under me while asleep, or sitting in a car that has them under my butt after it is 5 years old. I look forward to EV makers providing solid state batteries, hoping they can fix the other bugbears along the way. I am not enticed by fully reclining seats, massive screens, dash magnets and all the gimmicks they introduce, while I may be sitting on the equivalent of 6,000 smartphones. Especially when there are so many ice cars that are streets ahead of EVs anyway. I can't swing across when there's still a safer choice that's far better. Steering feel. I could include this in the fun factor for the genuine enthusiasts, but I think it's pertinent to any car that turns corners and goes over rough roads. And that's nearly all. Experts love to explain why the tiller needs to transmit to the brain everything the wheels are doing in all situations. And it's especially needed on long drives. Wonky steering is not a means to keep drivers awake. The Alpha wins on this front. 
and a Jag is a close second, but alas, Hyundai just doesn't have the engineering mouse to mix it with the experienced makers. And I think they may not be that interested either. From what I have seen, the Ionic 5 separates the brain from the tarmac in a big way. It may be that they think no SUV driver is going to want it. A fair call? I don't think so. Utility value. This isn't using it as a ute or pickup truck in the USA, but it's how well it is fit for purpose and covers a broad spectrum. Being an SUV is the natural priority and all are good at that, with not much separating them. Being a driver's car is a bit oddball, but the EV is way too ordinary on that front, and the other two make a reasonable fist of it. Being versatile puts the ice cars way ahead when I'm heading to Adelaide for more Petriti. You will need to watch my prior video to understand me. Being safe is to be expected, and one vehicle has a real thorn in its paw there. It may take more than five years, but they come as certain as reruns of MASH. Being long lasting is also a given, and two have much more of the car component doing that. Sure, in the 160,000 km warranty of the battery, you will go through three or four batteries in the Jag and or the Alpha but they will set you back about $140 a time and one replacement of that giant pack might cost the price of a Toyota Corolla. The second part of the term utility value is value after all. Value as in value for money? Look at feature for feature and even at roughly five grand more for these real cars, they are better value. You buy more of what is useful and less of the gimmicks. Now ice cars are better value when you can haggle well and Alpha is best for discounting in Australia, but Jag are not immune to it. However, Ionic is a fixed price, and dealers won't be offering much for your trade. I bet I can get far more for it at Alpha and Jaguar than any Hyundai dealership who is not getting the EV sale. No, that goes straight to Hyundai. There are other mitigating factors unique to my silly part of the world. No tax credits and a whopping luxury car tax on them all that is supposed to prop up the local car industry, which there hasn't been one for three years. We get ripped off from Hyundai and the government, mostly the latter. But the theft of the luxury car tax for basically Korean taxis is not the end of it. Two states down south have added a two and a half cents per kilometre annually in your taxes on an EV because you are no longer paying petrol tax. The greed is staggering. While this might shock other parts of the world, I don't think it won't ever happen in your neck of the woods. Some things I don't need a crystal ball for. Climbing down from my soapbox and conceding many countries a slightly better value for EVs than here in Oz, I still maintain that the Alpha and Jag are much better value anywhere. Conclusion. Well that's what the scoring is for and the scores paint a clear picture the EV is completely inferior. This 70% of the Jag for 97% of the price, maybe 103% if you haggle the Jag well. And the Alpha is 95% of the Jag at around 95% of the price, a good alternative if sportiness is more your thing. Alpha has a sedan if you are really serious. But the EV choice is really choosing gimmicks and forfeiting what makes cars usable. It is handing over the performance to the EVU CPU and spending a month or two every year just charging it. That's too much for me to work around. So what would I do if I wanted a slick SUV? I would probably buy a two year old Porsche Macan. Let me know what you think. Bye for now and stay safe.